Welcome to the training module in the framework of enhancing health and physical activity rates through Pentathlon Project. What is show jumping? Show jumping is an equestrian sport part of modern pentathlon, in which a rider and horse try to jump over all of the fences in a course without knocking them down and within a set time limit. It is performed in an arena in front of a judge and, often, a crowd. This activity requires a high level of teamwork between horse and rider, while testing the rider's skill and the horse or pony's power, scope, speed, athleticism, and carefulness. With training and practice, competitors can clear increasingly higher fences and will be able to compete at higher levels up to Olympic standards. The riding event, equestrian show jumping, Included in the modern pentathlon competition involves jumping over obstacles of up to 120 centimeters in height. The obstacle course is between 350 to 450 meters in length. Includes 12 obstacles with one double and one triple, for 15 jumps. Athletes compete on horses provided by the organizers, which are selected from a random draw. For warm-up and preparation purposes, Athletes are allowed to ride their allocated horse for 20 minutes and also to have up to five trial jumps in the warm-up arena provided. Pentathletes are given 20 minutes to inspect the course at any time during the competition program according to the organizer's schedule. The athlete has a specific time limit in which to complete the course, and the time limit is set according to its length. A clear round in the time allowed varies between 1 minute and 1.17 minutes and will give the rider 1,200 pentathlon points but mistakes will lose the rider points. For example knockdowns or refusals to jump will incur a penalty. Riders must jump the obstacles in order. Riders must wear protective headgear and a riding jacket and can use a whip and spurs. Horses hoods and blinkers are prohibited. What are show jumping distances? Combinations and distances are an elementary part of the show jumping sport. If you don't know how many canter strides your horse needs for a certain distance or how big the canter stride of your own horse is, riding a course will be unnecessarily difficult. In order to ride combinations and distances confidently, it is important for the rider to know how to measure the distances between two jumps as well as how many strides are needed. If the rider knows about these two factors, he or she can decide how to optimally ride the combination or the line. In order to be able to perform as well as possible in the course, you will find information here regarding show jumping distances as well as further important additional information. An average horse has a 3,6 meter stride which approximately corresponds to 12 feet, or 4 human steps. For ponies this distance is reduced to an average of 3 meters or 9 feet 9 inches. Keep in mind that this distance is only an indicator and it can vary from one horse or pony to another. When measuring the distance between two jumps the convention is to allow 6 feet for the landing of the first jump and 6 feet for the takeoff of the second one. As a European-based company, we often refer to the distances in our training courses using meters. Here is a little conversion table to help you find your way. They are sequences of two to three jumps separated by one or two strides. A lot of possibilities exist when building combinations and the preparation for each of them is very important. Show jumping combinations can be of two types. A double is a sequence of two elements whereas a triple is made up of three jumps. The type of jumps, and in what order they are encountered, Determine the level of difficulty. Two jumps are always separated by one or two strides which makes it necessary for horse and rider to be focused and to react quickly. Jumping distances for horses. One canter stride, will be from 7.50 to 7.90 meters or 24 feet and 6 inches to 26 feet. Two canter strides, will be from 10.40 to 10. 80 meters or 34 feet and 1 inch to 35 feet and 4 inches. Jumping distances for ponies will be the same. One canter stride will be from 7.50 to 7.90 meters, 24 feet 6 inches to 26 feet 0 inches. Two canter strides 
will be from 10.40 minus 10.80 meters, 34 feet 1 inch to 35 feet 4 inches. For the show jumping event, the athlete will need to effectively utilize different types of horse controlling equipment in order to dictate the movements of the animal. This equipment is known as horse tack and includes the saddle, the rider's seat, the stirrups, footholds for the rider, the halters, headgear for the horse, the reins, leather strips the rider pulls to change the horse's direction, and the martingale, a safety device that stops the horse from tossing its head and injuring the rider. The riding director, or his deputy who must be qualified to replace him, has overall authority of the riding event and is responsible for managing and coordinating the activities of all officials appointed, supervising the building of the course and of the warm-up arena, ensuring a sufficient number of horses for the jumping test and the competitions. The referee is tasked to assess the achieved results accurately. He is responsible for allowing the pentathletes on the course in accordance with time schedule, giving the signal by using a bell to start, interrupt and resume the event. The secretary takes care of the paperwork in the jumping test and during the event and is responsible for preparing the necessary requisites for drawing lots, recording the number and name of each drawn horse, issuing a note to the pentathletes with the number and name of each drawn horse and the mounting and start times for each respective pentathlete. The timekeepers are responsible for measuring every 30-second period after the signal for the start of a pentathlete and the 20 seconds period to resume the course after an interruption to rebuild an obstacle, stopping and starting timekeeping in accordance with the advice of the referee. The announcer informs pentathletes, teams and spectators on progress in the event. The course builder prepares the course before the event and maintains it during the competition. The starter has the obligation of announcing that the pentathlete may start the ride by hoisting or waving a flag. Horse Distribution Judges The warm-up judge is responsible for recording the number of finished jumps. The equipment judge is responsible for checking any whip, spurs and hat of the pentathletes before they enter the warm-up arena. There is also an official vet in case of any emergency. Like in every activity or sport, Depending on what you do, there might be greater or lower risk. Horse riding involves a certain degree of risk. A horse is a living being that might, for example, get frightened and show an unpredicted behavior that could unbalance you on the saddle, or it could stumble and fall. It must be borne in mind that there are many components that affect that risk, such as the horse's height, the speed at which you are riding, the type of trail, if you are in the countryside, the obstacles that there may be in the riding tracks, etc. At the beginning, it is advisable to ride a docile horse, suitable for a beginner skill level, and which is well tamed and used to the typical mistakes that an unexperienced rider might make. It is very important to start to learn how to ride with an instructor or a trainer. Don't try to do it by yourself. In that way, you will be safe as you become skilled enough to improve your own safety. Wear a helmet to protect your head. Most accidents in horse riding cause damage to the head and that could be avoided with a helmet. Oddly enough, many experienced riders refuse to wear a helmet, especially when they go riding in open country. But this is a reckless thing to do, since even the most skilled riders could fall down and bang their head. So, again, wear a helmet whenever you go riding. If you ride a young or a newly tamed horse, try to do it together with another rider and go to those places the horse already knows, at first. Under these circumstances, it is not advisable to go riding alone. When you ride in a group, try to keep a minimum distance of at least the length of the horse in case one of the horses kicks and, in that way, you will avoid being hit. Or in case there is a fall or an unexpected reaction, you can avoid them. It is advisable to wear a safety vest, and check that the cinch is tight enough and that the saddle seat is well placed before mounting the horse. 
perform regular horse tack checks, reins, head stalls, cinches, saddles, halters, etc., to make sure that nothing is broken or damaged, which might put you at risk while riding. We are already sitting on the saddle and we have to start off. That is to say, the horse has to start walking. You can do so in a riding arena or in an open field. You will have a rather awkward and unpleasant feeling. You will feel unbalanced and all this is because you have never practiced moving the different muscles that you have to use in order to move together with the horse and keep your balance. You will overcome all these feelings with practice. Going forward, start by pressing with your leg. From the knee downwards. That is. With the calf and the boot heel. Slightly behind the cinch. When the horse starts to move. As a response to the pressing cue of the leg. We will be always looking ahead and we must loosen the pressure when the horse begins to move forward. Keeping only a slight contact with our legs. Cueing to stop the walk. Once we have practiced the walk which has a slow speed, between 5 and 6 km per hour, we begin to learn to cue for a halt. For that, we must close our fists slightly on each rein classical riding style and begin to pull backwards, trying to keep the pressure on the bit until the horse stops walking. Riding a well-tamed horse, suitable for the rider's skills. Moving around places where the terrain is not complicated and matches your practice level. Avoiding those places where the horse can get scared. Such as busy roads. Being alert while stirring your horse. Checking the cinch to make sure it is always tight enough. And don't forget to check also the right length of the stirrups. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next module.